I'm really excited about being upside down. <laughs> So John, this extra 300L donated to us by Bruce Williams for to do exactly what you and I are gonna do today. Um, some upset recovery training and then some aerobatics. There's a reason why the world aerobatic champions fly extras. Nothing quite performs like this airplane and yet it can be very docile and recovers from upset very easily, which you and I'll demonstrate. So my name is John Gandy. I work at the Pilot Information Center at AOPA as an aviation technical specialist. Uh, right now I sit at just over 615 hours of total time, and over half of that's in multi. I've never done upset recovery training, so to speak. I've done unusual attitudes. That's relatively straightforward. I think upset recovery training will help in the long run. You know, being able to recognize it accurately and respond correctly is, is pretty vital. And, and it can happen for a number of reasons. So it's very important to make sure that you stay proficient with the idea of unusual attitudes and upset recovery. Look at the wing, the first thing you notice, it's, it's symmetrical. So it'll generate as much lift upright as it does inverted. Okay. Then the next thing you'll notice is this big uh, 300 horsepower engine. And the max gross weight in this thing is 2,065 pounds. So let's call it 2,000 pounds max gross powered by a 300 horsepower engine. So this thing in most regimes has a lot more power than you need. Mm -hmm. You know, power is power as required. It's not like a 172 or a Super Cub where when you say power, you're almost, you almost always mean full power, right? right. Power is required. Um, let me show you these spades on the ailerons here. It's kind of, I've heard the best description is what Michael Goulian says. He says, it's like power steering for your car. So when you get at really high speeds, this thing has a rapid roll rate and it's still easy control pressures on the pilot because what those spades do is help accelerate and make the aileron movement quicker, quicker. or easier at high speed so you don't feel that stick pressure. So I recently did get a tailwheel endorsement. I started with a Cessna 140 that I got checked out in. Uh, soon I'll be getting checked out in a Super Cub. The extra I know is a different beast from any one of those. So we'll see how that translates over, the, the skills from the 140 into the extra, if, if that's possible. One of the things you probably had to get used to in that 140 is on takeoff roll, push a pretty forward. good aggressive push mm -hmm. to get that tail up. And you, you, you bring it up a pretty, pretty good amount, yep. right? In this one, we're not gonna do that. You don't have a whole lot of prop clearance here. Mm -hmm. We're still gonna get the tail up to make sure that we're flying it with the rudder, but you'll notice that as we go full power, wait a couple seconds, the tail will feel like it's ready. We're just gonna ease forward just a little bit on the stick pressure, mm -hmm. pull that tail up just a couple inches. All I wanted is off the ground. Yeah, that, that's what we did in the 140. We, we weren't looking for a specific attitude, something that was nose down, just enough to get the tail off. Yeah, yeah, so this one, but even from your 140, this will be a lot uh, less of a tail up movement than okay. you're probably used to. Gotcha. You're just gonna barely get it off the ground. Just about the whole wing is an aileron, and notice there's no flaps. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about that on landing. But so you got a big aileron with a lot of aileron surface, and you've got those spades to help it move uh, even smoother and easier for the pilot. And so we'll come back here and look at the tail, and we'll look at a couple things. Look at the size of the elevator that you have here, and the authority that you have in the elevator. And then look at the size of this rudder. And that does a couple things. It's gonna help in some of the more advanced aerobatic maneuvers, so even at high angle of attack and slow speed, you have good rudder authority. Okay. And it helps actually make this thing land fairly docile. The landing mm. can be challenging because you can't see over the nose, so you have mm -hmm. to slip till you till right before flare. And you're touching down at pretty high speed, mm -hmm. or, you know, relatively speaking. But you got rudder authority all the way through the landing uh, with this big rudder. The idea of slipping all the way to landing wasn't something that was in my head. Yeah. But that kind of makes sense. Well, you'll sense. see, we'll slip, the landing will slip till just about into the overrun. Mm. Uh, and if I had to guess, maybe, I don't know, maybe. 25, 50 feet, somewhere in there, until you're, you're comfortable that you can see the runway, you're aligned with the center line, and then we'll take the slip out and pretty much, uh, you know, from that point, start the flare. Mm -hmm. And it's a little different than, you know, your tail well qualified. Yep. What you'll notice here is we're gonna set a landing attitude and just kind of let it fly it onto the, the three-point landing, Before. pretty much. There won't be as much throttle idle, hold the stick back flare, feel mm -hmm. the touchdown, not, not so much with this. Right on. Yeah, and we'll fly base and final at about 90 and we'll look to be over the over the overrun of the numbers at about 80. 
Okay. Yeah. It's still 40 knots faster than what yeah. I'm used yeah. to. Yeah. Right. And all of that is what helps make this thing such an incredible aerobatic performer. All right. I think we're ready.